filled with gladness. That's one way we can worship God and serve the Lord. Not with a, a long face, but with gladness, a joyful heart. Coming to his presence with singing. That's what we're going to do this evening. And then it mentions, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And then enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's the third one. And be thankful and bless his name. That's the fourth one. So those are ways that we can worship this evening and together. And then for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. So, uh, yeah, well, I want to just introduce uh, Mark and Ruth Nisley and their son Chris, and we'll let them, we'll have a prayer, and then we'll let them take over, and then they can finish the service as they feel led, and we'll give our attention to them. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for each one that came out this evening to worship. I pray that you would enter into our hearts and that we would glorify your name through our thinking of you and singing of you, and we just know that you are worthy to be praised for you are sovereign. You, you created us, and we want to be vessels in your hands. And be with them in a special way. Thank you for giving them safety as they travel today. And be with them as they uh, share your blessings with them. Pray that you would give them clear thoughts and clear voices, that we would praise you together for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. Thank you. <coughs> I was just thinking that um, if I had my way, or if I would rearrange it, I would have you all just sit up here in a circle with bowls of popcorn and have you kick off the shoes, <laughs> and uh, we just have a jolly good time singing together. But I think we can still do that. And yes, we are happy to be here tonight with you, and welcome to this Sing Along Live. We are trying to uh, live stream it as well. So for all you live stream friends, we're glad you're with us and we'll see if it keeps working or not. So the goal tonight, um, and I don't, you know, I don't have something especially planned out, except that I know that when God's people um, lay their burdens at the foot of the cross and just rejoice in his goodness and sing praises to his name, that he visits and says uh, he delights in the praise of his people. And so that's the goal for tonight. Um, and I'd just like to say, let's keep it informal if we can. If something comes to your mind that you want to share, a verse or an encouragement or a testimony or even a prayer request, um, or a, yeah, a song that you want us to sing, we'll try to sing it. Some of you, if you how many of you watch the Living Room Sing Along Alive with Mark and Ruth on Facebook or YouTube? Okay. All right, so some of you know that we try to sing songs sometimes that we don't really know. <laughs> so we have to make up words or tunes as we go. And every once in a while we have a wreck. We call it a train wreck. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, yeah. So we're here to worship him tonight. Join us in singing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
It has really been a blessing. By the way, you sound good. We're going to have to get a bus and have to go to the next sing along. This is really, yeah, praise the Lord. Um, it's really a blessing to, for the first time that I can remember, meeting some Nisley relatives down here in the Blountsville area. So I have to be honest with you, every time I hear Blountsville, Florida, what's the town? Is it Bill? It's not Bill? It's the town. That was the GPS that tried to tell me it was Bill. Yeah, Ethan also little. It's Blountstown. Every time I hear that, for some reason, my mind goes back to Brother Daniel Yoder because he was pastor of our church when I was a teenager growing up there at Central Mennonite Church in Dover, Delaware. And I'm almost sure he used to come down here and visit a good bit of there was interaction there. And I think Jesse did too. And of course, and I know that his their brother Monroe was here for a number of years. And so as I was doing some reminiscing and meeting for the first time Lonnie and um boy, the names are already going Chris. <laughs> No, not Chris, he passed away. <laughs> Wait, did he not pass away? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do the frying stuff in the relative anymore. I'm terrible at that. I told somebody I did not pay enough of attention when we were young and about Misty's. I thought, who cares about kinfolk? Now I wish I would have. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so it was fun meeting some of you and finding out how we are um, related. And of course, it's also special to meet at the see Carolyn, because years ago, um, Steve and Carolyn would stop in at our place there when he would come up there to, to visit the Yoders and go through there. So it's been good to kind of reminisce. But my thought went to, you know, all the things that happened to us, to you, in your life so far, I'm pretty sure that none of them were exactly how you would have expected it or how you would have prescribed it if you would have got your choice. Am I right? There's twists and turns and so many things happen and so many memories so many, and heartbreaking stories and losses. I mean, I even just uh, trying to imagine what it would have been like, was it a number of years ago when you, the church or the roof blew off the church or so to speak, or you had to remodel the church and just, and that's just, and that was important, but it was a financial thing. Then you have loss of lives and, and things go on. But for tonight, just for an hour, let's celebrate that goodness of God. You know, there's a song that, um, a newer song, we're not going to sing it tonight, but um, the goodness of God, all of my life you have been faithful. Your goodness is running after, running after me. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, when I'm sitting there in prison and singing to the inmates, I'm like, is that, is that a fair song to sing? Have they felt the goodness of God running after them? I hear the stories, the heartbreak. Almost every one of the prisoners um, there would say that uh, sometime in their early years, their daddy left home, or their mom and daddy were divorced, or their mom was on drugs so much that she didn't even know, you couldn't even take care of the kids. And they think, wow, growing up in something like that? But anyway, so is God's goodness pursuing us? Well, when we look back, if we're honest, and we did go through those times of pain even, we recognize that, yes, God was there. And Jesus is interceding on our behalf right now to the Father. Isn't that amazing? With groanings that cannot be uttered, it says. And so that's the kind of God we serve. His goodness is pursuing us. And we, and part of my process in my life of growing is going from the spirit of rejection, of thinking I never will amount to anything, beating myself for not being perfect enough, to receiving God's goodness. And like that one new song says, I am who he says I am. Amen? Amen. We're not who the devil says we are, thank God. But we are who God says we are. And that gives us reason to sing. And so for the, for the next hour or two, I'm hoping that we can experience that. And even as we go through memories, perhaps, and share memories, that we are sitting at the feet of Jesus and that we have this moment. So right now, tonight, here in Blunt's town, <laughs> we are enjoying the goodness of God. So we have this moment, just this moment. Let's embrace it because it goes away. So it reminds us of that old song that we sang quite a few times. I remember singing when this guy was just 
almost not even totally that, but reach his wings stand. And here he is with us tonight. We have this song. Hold tight to the sound of the music of many happy songs from Miss Yoder that came to Central Christian School to teach for a year, teach school. <laughs> yeah, and she's here tonight with four children. Isn't that amazing? And a husband. Yeah, Dave showed up at Delworth, didn't he? He couldn't leave her alone. <laughs> he could have back. Oh, we could have used her for another five years if he would have left me. <laughs> so good to see you folks here. And, and I did ask the question, honestly, I did ask the question on the way. I don't remember if Miss Gooder had a lot of bass in her voice, you know, like she really put her foot down or not. But I, then I thought of who she taught, and one of them was our son, Chris, here too. So I, yeah, she had that bass in her voice just to survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was David? Was it David? Oh, okay. Well, the now I can say that. Uh, yeah, I'm Mark. This is my wife, Ruth Nisley, and um, this is our second child, oldest son, Chris. And the story about him being along on the sing-along is pretty cool because we, when we were first planning this sing-along, 
we just put out there, you know, we're, anybody want us, we're heading south, anybody want us to stop and take their church? We did not realize at first that Chris was planning on moving to Colorado from Pennsylvania, and he arrived a day before we left, and he consented to come with us. Isn't that neat? And uh, I really say, bless him, Lord, when he's loading up the sound equipment for the equipment and all that. Out. That way I can visit more. So that's, no, actually, he's, he's also a, a very gifted singer. We're really glad to have him with us. So. Let's see that. Um, there was somebody requested sitting at the feet of Jesus. Can we jump to that one? That one? Uh, yeah, I didn't get the name, so. Somebody asked for sitting at the feet of Jesus. Who were you? We won't embarrass you. Or where were you? It was you. It was you. It was you. It was you. Okay. All right, I got you. Anyway, I love this. I just love this word picture. And uh, truly, we are, as his children, able to sit at, the, at his feet and uh, worship him and interact with him. Something Mama used to do, and I, I don't know, it may be pretty unusual, but I remember when we were children, she'd come in at the end of the day, and boy, she was a working woman. She, uh, you know, the garden and everything, and she'd sit on the couch and say, who wants to treat my feet? <laughs> and, she would, and, and she would bribe us. She would say, oh, candy, and you would. We'd sit there and we'd treat her feet sometimes. And there's some good stories and stuff when we're doing that. Let's try that in the key of E. So that was one of the things that just troubled me. But um, 
in that whole process, I had to remind myself over and over, it's not me that's got to fight this battle by myself. This is the Lord. We can trust in the Lord. And he did. He did many miraculous things. I'm pretty sure that you could tell stories, even though I'm sure that you've suffered losses. Um, there's also the goodness of God that you uh, experienced because he is the one that fights the battle. The battle's not mine, said little David. Lord, it's thine, I'm in your favor. I've given it all to you. I knew not what to do, and I'm so glad you let me see. You're really all that I need, for the battle's not mine. sense to you if I don't. But uh, yeah, I found out somewhere in, in life um, that I have the gift of sounding like a barking dog. <laughs> Isn't that a good gift? It's not a spiritual gift, trust me. <laughs> My wife will tell you that. You know, I've embarrassed her one too many times, I think, because, uh, but I used to delight when we get to the shopping malls and stuff, and 
you know, husbands and shopping, you know, anyway. I, um, so I step out of the car and, and in the parking lot and I just go, you know. And I try not to let anybody see me, you know. And uh, people look around for the dog. But Ruth, going straight into the store. She doesn't want to be associated with it. And so, um, and our sing-along, we had the privilege of serving at the Rock of Ages in McMinnville, Oregon for eight, 10 years as a chaplain there, and did a lot of sing-alongs there. The beautiful gift of music for those folks who, yeah, are lonely or need encouragement. Um, and there, I also used to delight to, to give the barking sound, and they'd just look around, where is that puppy at? And um, so from that, with our sing-along, living room sing-alongs, um, we started singing, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> and um, <clears throat> doing the barking sound, it was so funny because when we first did it, when we first started the sing along, we were singing every night for an hour. We soon found out that was just too unsustainable. And uh, so we quit and then started doing five nights a week for quite a while. And uh, so we'd get different requests and for some reason that song resonated with a lot of people that were listening in on the living room sing along live. As a matter of fact, some of them would say, oh no, you got our dog barking. <laughs> and so there's, it's kind of fun to imagine with like 20 different dogs across the world barking. And <laughs> so, so we're seeing that, how much is that dog getting in? And so we also have, a, from that came a lot of different requests for children's songs. So now that we do the live sing along, we like to have the children come up and our, and our people, especially people that are watching us can't get out, love to see the kids up with us singing. So, children, can you come up and sing with us? Anywhere between zero and 99 is children. <laughs> come on up, come on up and surround us here and help us sing some songs. We'd love it. Maybe do some motion. What are we going to sing tonight, huh? Doggy in the window. <laughs> hey, okay, come on up here. With you. I get lonely if I'm, don't get, yeah. get real close. Don't be afraid of me. I won't bark you. I just bite you. I just bark you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, when we get to the part in the doggy in the window where I bark, you guys bark along, okay? You're allowed to bark in church tonight. <laughs> Probably the only time you're ever allowed to bark in church, but you are allowed tonight. Hey, it's good to see you. Ready to help me? All right. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the
participate too. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this little light of mine and we're going to do the motions. But when we get to the, um, don't let Satan blow it out, right? Is that the one? <laughs> no, it's not that one. Hide it under a bushel. Yeah. We're not going to say, you know, we used to say hide it under a bushel. No, right? We're not going to say the no, the parents are going to. But they're going to say it differently. The first time when we see hide it under a bushel, all the daddies are going to say, no way. <laughs> And then the second time you sing hide under a bushel, the mothers are going to sing never ever. Okay? And then the third time, everyone is going to say, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, you got that, parents? You think you can follow that now? All right, let's try it. Let's try it. All right. Remember, let's, let's get our lights up here. Just a little light of mine. I'm going to shine. This is the light of mine. something you never have to be hide about or be shy about because the Lord is good and his mercy do it do it towards all generations. So yeah, keep on shining that light. What you got next time? Yeah, let's do that one. Alright. Come on up and join us at prayers if you want. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. They want always want to see who's in the audience to be on live. Some of you wanted to see that. Yeah, you can wait, that would be cool. <laughs> One of the things that has amazed us about, and it shouldn't have probably, but we're old. So, um, well, not Chris, and so 
And one of the things that amazes about the uh, sing-along is the different countries that joined us. Um, South Africa, um, oh wow. What are some of them? I shouldn't have started. Okay, I won't. I won't name them all. But there's quite a few. Matter of fact, last night we had fun because there was some from Scotland. And so Chris said our next sing along is going to be to Scotland. And said only if he learns how to play the bagpipes and wear an Irish uh, Scotland. Okay. Hey, I'm going to display as Philo Hendricks. And requested this song, Let Alma Bring Us All Together. Alma Nisley is related to me. Did you know that? By <laughs> you know, Lonnie, I have to tell you this. I was looking forward to meeting you. Where are you, Lonnie? There you are, right? Looking forward to meeting you, but I didn't expect you to be quite this old. <laughs> you know? That's because I'm not sure I was expecting what I knew. This song is such a beautiful message. It's the truth. There is nothing as powerful in this world as love. That's genuine, godly love. And we forget that sometimes. All things work together for good when God's love is understood. God is good and sing with us, and that's been such a blessing, one of the gifts from God here for this, so. <laughs> and I may have shared this last night, um, so for those of you who were watching, I apologize for repeating myself, but when I sing that song, Love Will Bring Us All Together, um, there's a lot of people who were great examples in my life of God's love. And uh, one of them, of course, being Mama, she was such a, she knew how to love. And she knew how to love sternly sometimes. Now, I like that. I, I hear a baby crying. That's so neat, isn't it? Don't feel bad about that, Mama. we will stop crying too soon. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, so, and another person that comes to my mind, honestly, is, is Daniel Yoder. He had the gift of mercy. <laughs> and it was nothing to see him. <laughs> yeah see him tear up over somebody over a concern he had at least from what I remember of him and I didn't know that you know all this life or anything but I remember that in brother Jesse too what a man of God what a mentor 
as we journeyed through a lot of life together. We, we moved, I moved into Penn, uh, Delaware when I was 15 years old, a uh, little bleachy boy from Pennsylvania and not knowing how to fit in and started attending Central Mennonite Church through some pretty uh, um, difficult events there. But as we were attending there, we started attending there, that's when I learned to know Robert and Joseph. Robert would have been Jesse and Gladys' son, who was killed in that accident when he was 17. And he truly was a, a, my best friend. He was such a mentor to me as well. But um, back to Daniel, uh, in, in the whole process of my dad's suicide death, I'll never forget how he loved so well in that. And it was difficult for him because I knew that he felt like he had somehow missed that as well. And there wasn't, uh, yeah. Um, and so in that whole process, um, suicide is not something that is supposed to happen. And I, I know it shows a little bit of my humanity, but at that point, I'm like, oh my word, the church is really getting embarrassed about this because this is not supposed to happen. It's going to be a bad testimony in the community. So we were talking about just having a quick, a quick funeral and getting it over with, if that's the right word to use there. And we weren't thinking too far, I know, but that's, that's kind of the process, the shock and everything. And the Brother Daniel heard us talk about that. And it was, I still can take it to the exact spot where he came over and he laid his hand on my shoulder. <laughs> and he said <clears throat> in his kind voice, um, you can do what you want to do about this whole thing. And we'll support you. But he said, I want you to know, I would encourage you to take your time to grieve. And I want you to know that we as a church will be here for you. And they were. Um, how do you go through difficult times in your life when your heart is ripped out or broken, when there's an unexpected loss or pain? Uh, they could be so many different things. Um, how do you go through that without the Lord and without experiencing His love? I don't know. I really don't. I just know that you and I are called to love as God loved. Amen? Amen. And uh, it's not always easy. Sometimes our attempts get misunderstood. <laughs> you know, I remember going, uh, people even there in, that, in, in Robert and Joseph's death and even in, in the dad's death and then when our 18 month old son Kevin was killed in a car accident. When people come to bring comfort, um, they don't always say the right thing. <laughs> Sometimes they say stupid things. You know, and I, and I do too. Matter of fact, it got to the place where when it to funerals, I'm like, I don't know if I want to go and say anything. Um, and, and I, it wouldn't upset me, honestly, it did, because I understood people were trying to, but I'll never forget also some of the men who uh, walked, journeyed with me, who came through, never forget, they came through the funeral. I could name them too, but I won't. And, and just didn't say a word, they just went with me. And so that's what we as God's people do. I think the Holy Spirit will give you words to say and give you ways to comfort when you don't even know how you're going to comfort. Because we want to fix it, man, right? We want to, I want so bad to fix it um, when our son Kevin was killed for Ruth's sake and for my children's sake. But you can't. You, you, just, you can't fix it. It's just, it's just part of what happens there. And so you go through that whole thing of, of where is God? What's he trying to teach me? And I remember, I remember one question, uh, by the time it came to our son Kevin's death, which was a number of years after dad's death, I'm like, am I such a thick-headed numbskull that God has to take me through this to, to teach me something? What does he want me to learn that I'm not getting? And, um, you know, so that was part of the, of the crisis that you struggle with. Realizing that, no, not necessarily. He wasn't using that to punish me or to teach me necessarily, but, you know, because I was extra hard-headed or hard-hearted. But I'll never forget Jesse's message that day at the funeral. He said, um, he, the idea was that God trusted us enough to allow us to go through that knowing that we would be faithful. And even that I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to trust me, you know, I didn't want. But can the potter, can the potter, then the clay say to the potter, don't make me that way. If we really put God at the head, if God is our Father and is in charge, then we do not need to understand it all, do we? As a matter of fact, we won't. <laughs> and so the events that happen to us in life, yeah, we, we'll learn from them and stuff, but let's just remember the sense of His goodness and His presence 
in, in spite of, of the pain or whatever. And then, of course, there's those beautiful experiences on the top. Somebody asked for this song, um, and I think it's ministers so beautifully to what I was just talking about, the dot of the mountain. <clears throat> I almost forgot about my mouth working here today. Kind of sorry for you for dumping all this heavy stuff on you right at the beginning, but for some reason you seem like family. <laughs> oh yeah, we are, that's right. <laughs> Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But in the valley, when things change and you're down in the valley, don't be Praise and worship songs 
just really impact my life. Uh, goodness of God is one of them. But the other one, um, well, there's quite a few, and I won't list them all. But this one, when death was arrested, um, when I heard that, I said, I want to sing that one. And one of the challenges for this old man is I don't have the rhythm that those fellows do. And my, my, my daughter, when, when I try to leave, when, when I worship there at Skyline, uh, she, she says, Dad, that's not the right rhythm. And so I, I, I try the syncopation, try to get it right, and, and she just kind of shakes her head and smiles, you know. Um, but so I will make apologies about this. Not apologies, but I explain this song. This song is sung as an old man would sing it, okay? But I, I love this message. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed of it. sin and our shame through Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, when that shame leaves, what a, what a peace that comes and takes its place. 
And Satan likes to say, no, no, you still own that shame. And we can tell him by the authority of God's word, no, we don't. <laughs> we are free. We're going to switch gears a little bit here, I think, now. Uh, one of the things we tried to do on our single one, I, I can't see the closet. <laughs> This, the um, <laughs> glitter, I can't see what's on it. Isn't that neat? It glares. Yeah. Oh, wait, is it glaring at me? <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things we like to do is take a little time. Uh, if you're like me, uh, when stress comes, it stresses relationships and it can stress marriages. And um, I, I used to chuckle or kind of grimace when Ruth would try to get me to take all the, the supplements especially during COVID. I, mean, I was serving as chaplain, so I would go to first floor where we had um, some elderly that tested positive, and we were told 40% of them would, would not live, and, and God did a miracle there. Uh, he led us to pray, I believe, specifically that people, yeah, we knew people were gonna die in nursing homes, um, but we were praying that specifically it wouldn't be COVID that would take them. And I don't know why that would have an important prayer in me. Um, I just felt like I didn't want COVID to steal <laughs> in that way. Anyway, we had one lady that passed away in the hospital and tested positive for COVID. And then we had a number of, I think, at least half of the first floor tested positive for COVID. And I didn't know what to expect as a chaplain. Um, one of the tougher things as a chaplain at a nurse, at nursing facility for the last 10 years was that I get to know these dear people and. And a few years later, it seemed like I was saying goodbye to him. And so I wasn't really looking forward to that at all. And then um, asked our CEO, what can I do as a chaplain? And I was asked to serve uh, as a caregiver on the first floor. We lost some staff. And uh, there I was. The beautiful thing, the reason I'm telling you this story is because God answered that prayer. For the next 21 days, not one of our residents passed away. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> and, that's, and, and I know that didn't happen everywhere, but I just want to proclaim God's goodness there. And in that case, for some reason, he wanted to glorify himself in that way. So we were really blessed by that. But in that whole process, relationships get, get uh, stressed. Even Ruth and I didn't see everything exactly the same about, well, about life and even COVID. And, and I used to tell her, she's getting me to take so much zinc that I'm going to start rusting. <laughs> But she took good care of me. <laughs> so we decided we do want to, and he's, as we're getting older, let's let's take time to honor and to enjoy the beauty of marriage. The world has so butchered that mess, or made a mess out of it, tried to, but we're not going to let him take that. Marriage, as God ordained it, is still, family is still one of the most beautiful things that God created in my mind. And, and I know he's created a lot of beautiful things. You individually have been designed for a relationship. Even single people, you know, you are designed for a relationship. And so um, whether it's brother and sister or, or husband and wife, but we particularly felt like we wanted to pay some attention to that. So we picked out a couple of love songs and we're going to sing some old people's love songs. Old people, you like this line here that says, as long as old women talk about old men. It's called Forever and Ever. <laughs> you may think that I'm talking foolish. You've heard I'm wild and I'm free. Well, you may wonder how I can promise you now. This love God feel for you always will be.
Gather with the saints at the river. 
with us, and he can sing these songs right, but he's not too sure I can play with him right, so <laughs> he's still got the challenge of the old man. <laughs>
children will follow Christ and uh, so it's a gift from God that um, all of our children have put their faith in Jesus Christ and we're so grateful for that we're also aware of the pain and this and the um, challenge of those who have children who decided for what whatever reason that Christ is not Jesus is not Lord of their lives at this point keep praying keep believing God does the impossible him do it in my life and he's done it in yours as well he's taken this old dutchman <laughs> and he's made something beautiful out of it might be hard to see sometimes but he has <laughs> and i love that he just has he does that he's such a good guy and he takes uh, i'll never forget meeting a man in prison ipod walked in one day tattoos everywhere Looks like he's in control of stuff. And he came up to me and seemed like he wanted to start an argument on us. He's like, you tell me God cares and loves? He said, how could God care? And sit by and watch when my stepfather would tie me in a chair and string the rope up over the rafters and hang me in midair so that he could go and have friends. While my mother was working at night, he would go hang out with his friends and drink with and tie me in a chair like that. So you tell me about that. What do you say or something like that? And um, I, I, you know, I believe the Lord gave it to me. I just, you know, I, I want you to know, because I remember going back in times of my life when Dad would get unkind and mean, and abusive, and um, wonder where God was there. And I worked through that process and that going back and, and saying, God, where were you? And hearing Him say, I was there, Mark. But the thing that he gave to me, and I mentioned this already, is that Jesus is there weeping, interceding with groanings that cannot be uttered. And so I told this gentleman, I said, I think the Lord was there weeping, but because of the brokenness and because of the fact that he lets people make choices, people have made choices that are horrible. And, and you, know, you, know, you know the whole story of creation and sin, how sin came into the world. And it was so beautiful a couple weeks later, did not expect this honestly, because we had quite a discussion that day. He came up to me and said, you know, Mark, he said, I have Jack, Mark, I'm not been able to forget what you said about Jesus groaning for us. And the Lord took that word, his word, his living word, use it, folks, memorize it, learn it. And uh, a while later, almost was a month later, he met with Chaplain Kayla and gave his heart to the Lord. And he's serious about it. And the challenge has just begun. He's, he's the fellow, honey, that we would go into, we do go into the county jails and do the sing-alongs, Ruth and I. And uh, one day he's like, Mark, you're holding out on me. I said, what do you mean? He said, you play mouth organ too, don't you? Well, I never took my mouth organ in there. And I, I was afraid the guards were going to take it in, all that metal. But um, he said, I said, how'd you know that? He said, well, I said, been talking to my wife on the outside, and I told her about your sing along, and she tells me you play my organs. <laughs> <laughs> so, word gets around, right? Here. But anyway, the beautiful thing is that he says, Man, I said, I want to get with young men, I want to warn them, I want to tell them, don't go this path. 
because it is so hard to get out of it. So please take a prayer card back on the table and pray for Ruth and I. We are soberly aware that outside of Christ, our work is futile in the prisons. But we are also blessed by over and over when we see men come to Jesus Christ, renounce their ties to the gangs, get anointing and healing for the different uh, lies that they believe in their life, the strongholds that grab them, the drug problems, and God gives deliverance to people. And it's not always an easy process, but it's a process that he leads. And uh, so yeah, pray for us. There's also an, um, a um, magazine, I guess you call it, back there that uh, explains a little bit more about the ministry of New Horizons Ministries. You've pretty much all heard about New Horizons Ministries, yes, no, yeah, some of you, okay, yeah. And it's a uh, ministry that we were uh, privileged to join back in August of 21. So we've only been a kind of new kid on the block, and I just I just got to where now they're letting me carry keys, and they call me associate chaplain. So so I'm progressing a little bit there. Because honestly, if you don't have keys, getting into chapel, getting into different places, uh, you had to wait for someone to come and unlock it for you. So it was quite a process. So God's blessed us with that. One of the things that happened on sing along, somebody gave us a whistle. Anna Hoover, Anna and Daniel Hoover, sent us this whistle because they heard us do a couple of. Uh, Sing along with numbers about trains. We do the long black train and all that sometimes. But tonight we're going to wrap up here, I guess, with this song here. Um, Life is like a mountain railroad, comparing our lives to the railroad. Go to that whistle, honey. <laughs> Trevor was just about our adopted son, Trevor. Um, 
He is now 29. He was, he was, or 26. He was about five years old back then. So it's a long time ago recording. Just want to make sure you know that so you don't expect to hear this. Probably better than this. But anyway, um, so we thought we had all of them sold. And here when Chris was moving, he came across two more boxes. So grab a CD if you want. Give a donation if you care to. Uh, but yeah, we'd like for you to have them as well. Anything else? Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we once again want to acknowledge your goodness, your grace, and thank you for coming. And, and uh, Lord, we pray that our worship was acceptable before you tonight in that you were lifted up and that our faith was strengthened. Father God, I pray for each one. You know what we need. Uh, we pray for healing for those who need healing physically. We pray for healing for those who need healing emotionally and for those who need healing spiritually. Father, for relationships that are stressed, perhaps. We pray for healing for that as well. We know, that, Father, that you have given us a way to love as you love and to care for each other as you care for us. We want to thank you for that. So we ask for your Holy Spirit to anoint, to guide, to lead us as we go from here. We will give you the praise and the glory that you so much deserve and much more than what we can give. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.